Hello. Today our guest is Professor Pavlos Kipuras. He's a judicial professional graphologist and expert in graphometric signatures. He's attorney at law and PhD. Uh, and he's talking to us from Greece. Hello, sir. Good evening, thank you. Good evening for us in Greece. Good afternoon, I would say. It's uh, 7 p.m. here. Uh, thank you very much for this kind uh, invitation and I am really honored to be here with you today. So the first question is, uh, isn't your profession is going to, to, uh, to disappear because uh, most of the signatures are electronic now? And we we hardly write anything with the handwriting. This is really a, a very very uh, important uh, question and something that uh, maybe um, uh, makes us a little bit uh, anxious. All the professionals that uh, we um, deal with this uh, sector. Uh, I have prepared a presentation where I make a reference to this uh, topic. We can see it later. As a first answer in this, uh, in this question, I would like to say that uh, everything depends on the um, mentality we're going to follow as a, a social community uh, worldwide. I mean that, uh, of course, we are talking uh, about we are starting uh, producing more and more digital documents, and we are starting to uh, write uh, less every day. But at the same time, uh, these electronic signatures we uh, now we which are traced on the surface of the tablet, which I call digital paper. It's a modern form of paper. Uh, will uh, make um, a step forward, I think, for handwriting, will give us the opportunity to uh, remain in, the, in our usual habits of handwriting. According to several studies of neurologists, uh, this is very important because it, uh, it's, this is very important for our brain because the feedback we get when we write on the surface of the, of the paper, of course. And uh, all the activation of all our senses is very important because um, uh, it helps us maintain our uh, IQ level in uh, the same in was when people were out uh, outside working and hunting. It was uh, somewhat uh, uh, important for their physical health, but uh, it doesn't matter that it was important. People don't do this anymore. The same, for example, with me. When now I have to feel the form for the doctor with a pen, I can feel how clumsy I am when I'm trying to write. My writing has changed tremendously because for years I'm not writing with my hand anymore. And I can feel how my muscles in my uh, palm hurt after a couple of letters that I have uh, written. And also, I feel that my uh, small motoric is not the same as it used to be because uh, I hardly do anything uh, that precise as, as, as handwriting. So, uh, yes, there will be some stage where uh, these things will coexist, but uh, in some countries, it's, uh, it depends on the laws of the country. Some countries... Uh, accept uh, uh, electronic signatures, some don't, some uh, accept uh, copies, some have uh, only originals to be presented in court and so on and so on. But we are moving in a certain direction, even in the countries where they had more uh, strict laws, uh, uh, they transform into the less strict in terms of electronic signature and, uh, evidence. Uh, we also more and more provide the video evidence instead of uh, uh, written statements. Uh, uh, it's uh, the whole new thing because we, we now have special programs that actually can fake even the videos. And we all see it on the internet how the uh, uh, famous people uh, uh, pronounce things that they have never pronounced and it, it looks very real. So the challenges are, are, are quite new, 
but uh, getting back to to your profession it's uh, very exciting so you say that it's impossible to fake the signature is it i i could not say that it is impossible it depends on the talent of the forger in every case it depends on his training on trying to uh, imitate the authentic signature, for example. But uh, uh, we have several parameters that help us diagnose the forgery. Uh, always the problem in our, in our uh, field of expertise is uh, the quantity and the quality of the comparative material. When we have a, a hand, a person, an individual which has a great range and amplified range of graphic variability, uh, we need more and more comparative material in order to identify every particular uh, element of, of the authentic uh, handwriting or signature. Then we can identify in this case and under these circumstances, we can identify better the, the forger. There are, uh, How you will deal with the person which is very old and for last 10 years was in the hospital and didn't sign anything and he, he has signed his uh, last will and his signature can look very different from what you have from the previous materials. There are several uh, scientific rules that uh, help us uh, make a diagnosis even in this case. Of course, uh, we need the medical documentation so as to have um, particular information about his clinical condition in the suspected period. Then uh, we need to know, of course, if there are comparative samples of that particular uh, period in order to understand which is the level of his graphic skill in that moment. On the other hand, I, I have to say that um, usually in these cases, when they forge uh, testaments, for example, of uh, elderly people of this uh, condition, they usually um, leave no trace of the comparative material. The forgers leave no trace of the comparative material because the victims of these uh, situations understand what has happened afterwards so they don't have the opportunity to collect comparative material in order to demonstrate the forgery. Uh, this is a historical problem, I would say, of, uh, of uh, solving a case. Uh, that's why every particular case is quite unique, so you need to be very careful. Uh, although we have uh, some uh, measures and some uh, um, uh, rules that could help us uh, arrive to the conclusion. I would have to say that is a, there is a particular sector of handwriting examination, which is called graphopathology, which deals with the negative effects that are presented in the handwriting of elderly people uh, according to their uh, condition, the, their clinical condition, and which are connected to particular diseases, of course. In every case, because of the uniqueness of every uh, individual, we have to, have, it is important, it's very important to have at our disposal comparative material of the suspected period so as to see how the certain, the specific hand of the testator reacts under this condition of the disease. Maybe we start with your presentation to see some uh, details. Of course. So, you let can me share. share my screen. Uh, No, mm -hmm. we don't need, we need this one. Let's oh, beautiful. From the beginning. So today we're talking about uh, graphology. Uh, we have to say that uh, during the time we have um, gone through different um, combinations of kinds of paper according to the, the elements of uh, constructing paper and different kinds of pen. And in every case, we have a combination of, character, of characteristics which may um, alter a little bit our handwriting production. My current uh, affiliation, as you said, I'm a document examiner. I'm an expert on uh, graphometric signatures or electronic signatures, as you said it before. This is the most common term for uh, referring to this uh, particular uh, evolution of our field. 
and I am professor in three, in three different uh, private schools of graphology in uh, Italy and uh, research advisor of South Ural State University in Russia. Of course, I am also an editorial member in two scientific uh, uh, journals, the Journal of Law and Changing World and Digital Technology Journal of Digital Technologies and Law. Talking about graphology, what is graphology? Uh, I will refer to it as a particular scientific field for the moment, and we will explain later which are the problems regarding the recognition of its uh, scientific nature. The main uh, purpose of uh, graphology is the analysis of the handwriting in order to uh, understand the personality of the writer. As a term, graphology derives from the Greek word graphologia, which is uh, the combination of the word grapho, that means write, and logos, which means talk about or explain. We have four different, uh, different uh, specializations of graphology. The judicial graphology or document examination, we will talk later about the use of the terms and which is the most appropriate for uh, referring to this particular field. We have professional graphology, evolutionary graphology and graphology of consultancy in family. Let's see the other three sectors what um, they are dealing with. The family consultancy regards the analysis of personality in, uh, of the personalities of a couple or of a family in order to identify points of compatibility or not compatibility which could uh, create problems in their communication. Evolutionary graphology uh, first of all studies the evolution of the personality during uh, throughout time but at the same time it focuses on the study of the first designs of children as a way of revealing their unconscious part and as a way of uh, um, identifying how they feel negative, how they experience negative events of their family, even the violation, for example. Professional graphology uh, refers to the selections, uh, to the selection of staff according to the personality to the personality of every uh, employee in order to uh, collocate it in a working post where he's more productive and he feels more happy about it. And psychologically, psychologically he is in a better uh, condition so as to be more productive. It uh, regards not only CVs uh, written, handwritten uh, and making analysis of it, but uh, it could be even a sample taken uh, during um, the necessity of uh, reorganizing the special department of the firm, for example. This is a specialization which is uh, applied in uh, some uh, more healthy countries of the Central uh, Europe. And of course, we have uh, even judicial graphology, and we will talk about it later. As far as the uh, theories, the different schools, the different theoretic approaches of uh, the analytic graphology, which refers to the analysis of personality, are concerned, we have to say that we have the Italian theory in Europe, of course, of Girolamo Moretti. According to uh, his uh, approach, uh, the personality is the expression of two different elements of the soul as the source of the human body and of the material aspect of the body. He thought that there is a continuous exchange of information and interdependence between the parts of the body in its totality, and that the graphic expression is not to be analyzed in its static aspect, but as a result of the graphic movement, which feels and reflects a permanent feedback between soul and body, so in its dynamical aspect. For this reason, he believed that the static theoretic translation of the graphic signs, that could be elements we uh, observed in uh, analyzing the handwriting, would not reveal the real graphic nature because uh, the graphic analysis should be seen as a dynamical and variable combination of the graphic signs in its totality. And for this reason, writing becomes a graphic uh, gesture, so a dynamic synthesis of the character's structure combined, of course, to the physical uh, tendencies of the writer generally, but uh, especially even in the time of handwriting uh, production. 
on uh, the French, the French uh, um, field. We have the French theory of Jean Hippolyte Michon, Gilles Trepier Jamel, general indication, historical, historical indication we can find even in Wikipedia about their uh, theories. And we have the uh, theoretical uh, approach of Germany with uh, uh, Ludwig Klages. The common conception of all these uh, theoretical um, systems was the study of the graphic uh, rhythm, that means the dynamic uh, expression of uh, handwriting of the writer. We have to say that regarding the scientific nature of uh, graphology and its recognition, that there is a universal demand to consider as a science only what, what could possibly be calculated or, uh, or uh, repeated under uh, certain conditions by using a specially established uh, method. For example, a chemical scientist would reprodu reproduce numerous times the same result by mixing the same elements in the same quantities under the same conditions and by following the same methodological procedure. Is this uh, applied in the case of graphology? Could be applied? Could it be applied? Of course, this, this is the scientific mentality of positive scientists, which deal directly or indirectly with mathematics. This is the question, if it would be possible to apply the same rules, even in the scientific centers, sectors which deal with the human uh, individual. Graphology, of course, analyzes the character and the personality of the writer as an expression of uh, a behavior, of his graphic behavior in a certain particular time. So can, how can we be sure that the same individual would, will always react in the same way if given the same stimulus in different times? I think that this is not uh, possible to, to happen for several reasons because uh, things as, are much more complicated in the case of uh, humanistic sciences. Do we have now the computer programs that are doing your job? Like uh, uh, you feed the signature and the reference signatures and it gives the probability of the authenticity? There are several programs. In my uh, personal experience, they don't, uh, they can't arrive uh, to a, um, a result with a certain um, grade of uh, uh, safety. Let's let's call it like this, because the basic problem in uh, arriving at, uh, in the conclusion in the expertise is uh, how we explain and how we. Uh, take into consideration uh, all the elements, all the findings that we find from the analysis. This is something we have to uh, estimate by ourselves by using its a, a personal estimation, a human estimation, which depends on the uh, capacity, uh, on the knowledge, on the quantity and the quality of the knowledge of the professional and of course of his uh, experience always according to the material that has at his uh, disposal. So I think that uh, some indications could, could uh, really derive from these elements, but sometimes they might be uh, disorientating our, um, our approach to the, to the case. Uh, one of the reasons for this um, problem is, of course, that the graphic expression could be altered more or less by extrinsic factors. So, when we um, analyze a particular document with these uh, softwares, we can take uh, measurements or findings, uh, forensic findings regarding this particular document. That means that we don't take into consideration the range of uh, graphic variability of the hand or other particular uh, issues such as the psychological condition, the physical condition, the clinical condition of the writer in that certain uh, moment of producing the handwriting. Um, for this reason, I think that it could be almost impossible to recreate and to reproduce the same conditions in order to take the same graphic result from the same uh, graphic hand. And uh, we have to say in this point that something that is common, low, common knowledge, even different scientific sectors, not only in graphology, that uh, we know that even two squiggles written by the same hand, one after the other, are not completely identical. 
For these reasons, uh, with the collaboration of two doctors, uh, we wrote uh, last year in April 2021 uh, to medical practitioners, uh, the orthopedist Christos, Dr. Christos Kosmidis and the general doctor, Dr. Dimitrios Karpalezos. Uh, we made a study, we published an article with this title, Why Two Genuine Signatures Are Never Identical in Practice. Uh, it is publicated in this link and it is free for downloading. So we try to give evidence and scientific explanation for something that we knew in our sector, at least from uh, bibliographic reference, references. Does it matter in which language the signature is made? It could, uh, uh, especially for the signatures, uh, it, uh, it is a less important factor because we usually reproduce morphological forms which are not uh, practically uh, handwriting. There are persons that uh, sign using um, by writing name and surname, but more, most of us uh, use uh, abstract uh, morphemes. So it's not important in this case. It would be much more important in the case of uh, handwriting of texts, uh, because, for example, there are different uh, alphabetical or non-alphabetical uh, systems, such as uh, the Chinese language, which is in the stage of uh, ideography, where uh, the, um, uh, they write in the opposite way from uh, the left to the right, so the direction of handwriting is different. For example, uh, I, I spent 10 years in Israel uh, since I was 19 until 29, and my signature is in Hebrew. Even though I live in Canada for 22 years, but uh, I write my name in Hebrew when I sign. These are experiences of the personal history of the personal life of every individual that affect, of course, his handwriting and his uh, signature. It is uh, so for this reason, even in cases of expertise, it's very important to uh, have at our disposal this kind of information. Because even the fact that someone knows how to write in a different language from his native but, one. Uh, even different. those who read Hebrew will not recognize uh, in my signature that I actually have written it in Hebrew. It's just, uh, yeah. The, the form is really abstract, so it's not, uh, you can't recognize what, uh, what is, uh, is practically. If I written. show the individual letters, they will admit yes, but not from the first sight. In these cases, uh, it's very important for revealing the particular uh, elements of uh, handwriting to uh, be able to observe the sequence of the strokes and the direction, if it is clockwise or anticlockwise in every particular point. This is a very uh, usual error of uh, forgers because they try to recreate the form of the signature and they can't uh, deepen into the uh, dynamical aspect, what we said before, the dynamical aspect and the uh, hidden characteristics of uh, handwriting. So it's more important uh, w where we put the strokes and in which order, rather than uh, how it looks. Exactly, and this is a point where uh, the electronic signatures or graphometric uh, signatures could help us because these uh, signatures are connected, the tablets practically are connected to particular softwares, which have the opportunity to recreate even in video uh, the connection, the, all the uh, movement of the hand and the direction of the strokes. So it is uh, a more objective, we can collect in this way more objective data, which help us uh, understand if a uh, signature, for example, is uh, fake or not. Because this is a particular point where uh, usually forgers uh, make um, some errors. Uh, by trying to reproduce only the form, to design practically the form of, uh, of the authentic uh, signature. Pavlos, Another... with your knowledge, can you forge the signature uh, so the, the uh, consultant will not recognize it as a forgery? No, no. This, this is a, a natural talent of uh, several persons which is not... I don't have this talent practically, so to tell the truth. But can you uh, give the instructions? You can analyze uh, the direction of the strokes and the strength of the strokes and uh, like you, you analyze the signature, right? 
I, I analyze the signature, I can find uh, the direction, I can diagnose the direction, but that does not mean that I will tell to, uh, to the eventual forger how to do it, no. Another problem for the forgers is the uh, fact did, that- Did anybody create the printers that would forge the signatures? To tell the truth, uh, in uh, in the past there was a problem. Uh, there was a particular uh, piece of um, it, it was not a, a machine practically, but something that worked in the same uh, in the same uh, way. So, uh, if you had a particular specimen, authentic specimen, and you try to recreate to to follow uh, all the the strokes, uh, it directly could give you on the other uh, side. A, a reproduction of the form you you had followed of the strokes of the direction of the strokes of all the the sequence of movements you have followed in order to reproduce the problem is that even if we try to uh, trace practically a, an existing uh, specimen we cannot follow exactly the same um, path so uh, i heard in a conference two years ago that uh, there is a a particular uh, kind of machine which is connected to a software which could recreate exactly even the differentiation in the graphic pressure between the uh, authentic specimen and the false one. Of course, in this case, if the perfection of this uh, software is, uh, is of, of uh, extreme level, maybe we can't, we won't be able but to- But it's very important, uh, according to your article, if you have two identical signatures, it completely can mean identical. that they are forged. Yes, but the problem is that we don't have at our disposal, we usually don't have the source, what? the authentic specimen, which is the source of forgery. If we have it, we can demonstrate that uh, the other uh, specimen is forged. But we usually don't have it because the forger tries to hide elements. So there is the problem of uh, demonstration. Maybe we can understand from the instinct or the experience that something is not going, uh, something is wrong here, but we have to demonstrate it for the court. That's the problem. Always a demonstration to prove the evidence. Not only in our sector, even in other uh, uh, in terms uh, kinds of, the of expertise. Mistakes, how reliable is graphological expertise? How reliable? It depends on the um, different parameters. Uh, if we have a, a quantity and a, an appropriate quantity and quality of comparative material, if we have made the appropriate technical analysis of the suspected document, uh, we can be quite sure about the conclusion. But uh, when the, the criminal is uh, asked to give his uh, specimen, can he alter his writing so to fool the experts? Of course, uh, this is something uh, that usually happens. That's why we ask for uh, specimens uh, of uh, the chronological period of the suspected document or in general specimens of the past, because we know that, has, that there is a psychological condition which might lead, especially um, uh, if someone is guilty, will do it much more because uh, he's under stress so he could uh, try to disguise in order to, to avoid the identification practically. Are there the cases that the defense hires another uh, expert and he is basing his uh, uh, conclusions on the same uh, material, but the conclusions are opposite? Sorry, I have a problem with the connection. I didn't hear the last like, part uh, of the question. When in court, the defense can hire an expert Another that expert, might yes. have different opinion than the expert uh, provided by the uh, even this even this happens very it happens usually because it depends on the uh, explanation of the data revealed of the findings of the forensic findings of course it depends on the uh, level of knowledge and the experience of the um, uh, expert. Uh, we have to say that uh, in cases of um, good quality of uh, comparative material, 
the margins of error are not so uh, big, so uh, there are uh, little things to do for the technical advisor of the parts. Uh, but every case is unique, so we have to examine every case uh, separately. We can't uh, define a, a rule about what's happening. In, Are uh, there any studies when the expert were provided with the forged and real signatures and uh, were asked to give their opinion and then compared under control study? There are many studies in this case. Uh, they start, they have as a starting point a different um, uh, orientation in their studies. They, they want to arrive to different conclusion, conclusions. Uh, but there are many studies which are based on this uh, method practically of uh, studying a particular uh, behavior, graphic behavior. They have groups of uh, control where they give uh, um, a certain indication about uh, writing or uh, signing and other groups of control. There are even studies regarding the um, statistic, uh, let's say, results of uh, successful conclusions of uh, the handwriting experts, of forensic document examiners in general. In general. So there are many studies in this sector. The problem is that um, we can't uh, take as a point of reference only particular uh, cases because there is a vast variation of cases uh, which depend even on the, histor the historical facts of every um, uh, case. So uh, the field, let's say, is quite um, variable. Of course, there are um, principles and rules uh, to follow, which could be uh, something like a net of safety for uh, uh, avoiding uh, errors. But uh, we have to say that uh, this is maybe the, the most uh, um, important part of this uh, job, that every case is unique. So uh, me, I, me personally, I like that this part because I try to identify in every case what the forger, the eventual forger, has uh, managed to imagine uh, in order to uh, recreate a scenario, historical scenario, in order to deceive the victims and even the court sometimes. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue, of course. As a um, Characteristic example of a very simplified uh, signature, a squiggle practically, we can see the. What's the classification of the complexity of the signature? The very, uh, the, the small signatures which are composed, uh, which consist of uh, less elements without being able to say one or two or three elements or three traces, etc. But the, uh, the ones that are less uh, complicated are called squiggles. The other ones that are more extended are called uh, signatures. In this case, we have a squiggle practically because it is composed of only three lines. And although it is uh, just a simple form of uh, the number four uh, inverted, we see in three different uh, um, specimens that we have uh, several uh, variations which are quite... Are they obvious. all real, these three? Yes, they are all real. They are all published by Jean-Claude Juncker in his uh, Twitter uh, profile. So we can see... But I would suspect that uh, they are forged. <laughs> they are really not. <laughs> he has published them on Twitter. So... The explanation that is given in the field, in the scientific field, is that we are humans and we can't repeat uh, the same behavior uh, several times. This is, of course, scientifically totally inadequate because we can perform much more difficult uh, tasks and with uh, remarkable precision. A classic, a classic example of five uh, fine hand movements is the threading of a needle. But there are even more impressive and difficult and complicated uh, tasks, such as the uh, method of somatic cell nuclear transfer. We're holding in the dominant hand a micro pipette with a 9 or 10 meter of lens, than a 1% of a millimeter, aided, of course, by a microscope. We can uh, manually suck a nucleus having approximately the same diameter with a micro pipette out of the cell to be cloned. 
This is a standard procedure for this uh, method, which is performed successfully and manually in thousands of uh, successful procedures yeah. for the cloning of cells. And the cell to be cloned, the ovum, has a diameter of approximately 0.1 millimeter and the nucleus a diameter of about 0.101 millimeter. This is the uh, method used in order to um, clone the first uh, and famous female uh, domestic sheep in 1996, which was called uh, mm -hmm. Dolly. Only in the last years, uh, we have uh, publications regarding the effect, the um, uh, substitution of uh, this procedure, procedure by uh, electronic uh, means and uh, mechanical uh, uh, machines and mechanical method, uh, electronic method, digital method, practically. Another example of manually performed task is, um, which requires a great precision, is the writing of many letters in, uh, on a single uh, grain of rice. Uh, in 1991, the world uh, record was uh, 1,314 characters in a grain of rice. Practically, an Indian had written the names of 168 countries and regions on a single grain of rice. And more recently, someone from India wrote 1,749 characters on a single grain, even 249 characters on a human hair and a log speech on a small postal stamp. So we can see that we can perform really um, um, difficult uh, tasks which require many precision. Just two hours before our uh, meeting, uh, I found on uh, Twitter that uh, a professor of law, a Spanish professor of law, has published uh, um, a trial of a student to uh, reproduce uh, the, the greatest part of the Spanish uh, code of uh, penal uh, procedure in these uh, small pieces of paper in uh, this kind of pens in order to pass the exams. So we can really do um, particular very strange things. The first empirical evidence was given in 1894 by William Hagan, one of the first uh, um, bibliographic references of our sector, which really declared that when two signatures of the same person exactly coincide, this, is con this condition of their appearance is very positive evidence of forgery, that in one, the one of them was traced from the other and uh, that it is impossible to occur in the writing of two signatures produced currently by the, habitually by the same hand. And the calculation made by Professor Pierce, who, which was a well-known mathematician of that uh, era, uh, indicated that it, this could only happen once in 2 trillion 866 billion times. Practically during our life, we don't have the opportunity to uh, write the same signature or the same letter all that time, so practically, practically is it is impossible. In this article, we indicated uh, four different uh, uh, reasons and explanations for signature non-replicability. One of them uh, deriving from ophthalmology and psychology because there is no possibility of visual feedback. Practically, uh, tracing the lines is uh, much quicker than the uh, visual feedback that the brains gets from the, from the analysis of the already traced uh, element in order to give. So it doesn't have the time to give again the order to the hand to change something in tracing the, in the next uh, uh, stroke. The fact that uh, there is a quasi random motor unit activation, this is an indication of uh, physiology. So every time the brain gives the order to the hand to write something, uh, there are different motor units that uh, randomly are chosen by the human, uh, or by the, our um, organism in order to produce the handwriting. Then that there is the controllability of relevant muscles and not of all of them, which derives from neurology and neuroscience. And that there are unique sequences of contracting uh, muscles that derives from anatomy and kinesiology. A remarkable example for this is the fact that uh, but the about the fact that uh, if someone tries to repeat exactly the same movement uh, twice, he's not always, it is quite impossible to, to repeat it exactly in the same way, is uh, the free shots in basketball where even um, very famous and very successful 
basketball players, in this case Giannis Antetokounmpo, for example, the famous Greek NBA player, uh, has a free throw, uh, an air ball in a free throw. So uh, it, is, uh, it is really remarkable the fact that every time we activate different uh, groups of muscles in order to reproduce the same uh, uh, graphic form. And this is the reason why uh, we can't reproduce exactly the same identical uh, morpheme. Returning to the question of the term uh, we, which we should use in the expertise, if it, is, uh, if it should be uh, appropriate to use the um, term judicial graphology or document examination or forensic graphology or, or other terms that we hear worldwide, uh, I have to make a distinction, first of all, because uh, judicial graphology has a different approach respect to analytic graphology. Uh, it uh, takes into consideration uh, even the um, way of uh, producing in the anatomical part of the function of the human body of producing the handwriting because the graphic stroke is a neuromuscular activity and of course writing is a direct reflection of a mental order as it is canalized through the physiological circuit of the human anatomy. So, which is the right term to use? Which is the most uh, um, appropriate term? Is it uh, graphologist or document examiner? Uh, sometimes we hear that uh, there are different uh, professional figures. Is, it, uh, is this correct? Uh, do these terms represent the same activity? Do we need a new term which will be commonly accepted? Is there a need of a different orientation in establishing the epistemological basis of this uh, scientific sector? Independently of the term used, which is the role of this professional figure in every uh, market, I mean, in every professional market in the field of expertise? Of course, we need a global collaboration in order to arrive in a, a commonly accepted uh, answer in these uh, uh, terms. In the past, we have uh, heard even the terms calligraphy, which derives from the Greek word kalos, which means beauty, and graphy. Uh, um, it is called calligraphy in other Latin uh, alphabets, or graphology, we explained it before, or even documentoscopy, or do documentoscopia, which derives from the document. It's a quite mixed term, uh, using the Latin uh, term and the Greek term, uh, which is the word scopeo or scopo, uh, which means observe, observe something in the document. Or maybe the term graphotechnica, because um, in the present uh, era we make even technical analysis of the documents. Uh, fortunately, the technology has given us this opportunity to make even a lab, to make even a lab inspection of particular documents where sometimes we get the answers uh, if there is a forgery or not. Uh, the sector of graphopathology, we talked about it uh, uh, some minutes before, uh, takes into consideration the effects of fades because we have to um, have uh, information about the clinical condition of the writer in a particular, in the particular suspected period. Uh, usually the testaments are, uh, are written by elderly... How successful intentional alteration uh, of a person handwriting in order to deny its original relation? Is it successful? It depends on the talent of uh, the person with, who is disguising his handwriting. Uh, it depends even of um, the range of his graphic variability because... What if I, I try to forge my own signature by writing in backwards? You will look at it and say that it's forged. Everything is, it, everything is possible in these cases, but there are uh, particular elements regarding the dynamical aspect and the qual qualitative aspect of producing the handwriting which remain the same. Because in every case, there is the same uh, human being, the same brain, the same neuromuscular system which produces the particular specimen. The things that change might be the orientation of uh, the strokes, uh, even the um, morphological aspect could, could be completely different, but there remain some particular aspects. Of course, in these cases, we need much more comparative material. In For example, if uh, my signature from left to right, because it's in Hebrew, and I will try to write it 
backwards from right to left. Everything will look weird, different, and the direction of the stroke, there won't be a stroke, right? It will be just opposite. So even the fact that it is uh, the direction is opposite is, opposite, is uh, a, an indication. But we have to know that you have this knowledge of writing in Hebrew and that your um, original uh, signature is written in this uh, way so that we could um, uh, orientate our uh, uh, work hypothesis even in that direction in order to diagnose. Uh, it depends on several factors. The more complicated or the more um, different uh, is a particular specimen in respect to the uh, comparative material, the more comparative material we need in order to identify all the particularities of the graphic, of the authentic graphic. Uh, what expression. about left-handed uh, writing, like to pretend that I'm left-handed and to sign uh, with my left hand instead of right hand? In both cases, even if we change direction or if we write with the left, uh, the left hand when we uh, usually write with the right hand, the problem is that uh, there would appear hesitations in writing because in writing the traces because this is not our trained hand in, uh, in the production of handwriting or signature. So this is not uh, so spontaneous for us because we are trying to force our hand in order to uh, uh, diverse the usual ability and the usual uh, tendency we have when we're writing uh, spontaneously. So there could uh, be hesitations, even maybe um, uh, um, quite often uh, uh, result is uh, breaking the um, signature in different parts as if it was a puzzle. That, uh, that is a, 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 con not a conclusion, that is an effect because of the fact that we don't use our usual and spontaneous handwriting. We're trying, we're giving continuously a control of uh, our hand by our brain. We are blocking practically the tracing, the usual tracing of the lines in order to change uh, the content of our signature. So there are always uh, hesitations. Of course, it depends on the individual because there are individuals that they are writing with both, both hands. <coughs> Sorry, they are, they are trained or they find it very um, easy to write with both, with both uh, hands. Uh, in a handwriting where the orientation is from the left to the uh, right, the persons who, who write with the left hand, they have uh, another problem that uh, by writing, they are covering the traces and the letters they, that uh, they have already written. So, um, of course, they have a visual, they lack this uh, visual feedback which uh, does not give them the opportunity to change the already uh, written traces or the traces that they are writing in that exact time, as we said before. But they have the opportunity to observe the quality of uh, the appearance of their handwriting in order to change the next words, the next letters. So this is a disadvantage for them. On the other hand, in uh, uh, graphic systems where they write from the right to the left, the same problem exists for the persons who write with their uh, right hand. So everything could change according to the circumstances and to the particularities of every uh, particular individual. individual. They are, there are persons who can be able to write with the right hand from the right to the left and in the same exact time with the left hand from the left to the right reproducing in the same time the same text, as if the, the paper was divided into parts. Uh, everything depends on the ability, on the capability, even the IQ of every particular writer, and of course how trained it is in reproducing his uh, signature or uh, handwritten text. In every case, there are uh, given rules having the validity of methodologic, methodological principles, which regard certain phenomena which are connected to several graphic uh, behaviors. And of course, there are particular signs that we observe uh, in order to identify 
the dynamical and qualitative aspect of carbon writing, and even, of course, uh, compare the morphology, even the morphological uh, one. There might be uh, cases where we find uh, a different for morphology of particular letters, which depends even on the graphic, on the range of the, the graphic uh, variation of the particular writer. And we have a problem of proving that it's, uh, it, um, it is the product of the same hand if we don't have an extended comparative material, because we have to find, even in the comparative material, the same elements. On other cases, though, we have the opportunity to identify the same forms, the same shapes in different letters. For example, uh, in the upper part of the number two, we have a circle which is uh, compatible with uh, the letter O. We can uh, uh, identify there if there's the um, uh, same direction, if it is in both cases uh, clockwise or anticlockwise, or which is the starting point of the circle, which is the finishing point of the circle. So in some cases, we will have the opportunity to identify several uh, aspects. In other cases, when the forger is more clever and more uh, professional, let's say, in hiding the details uh, which are useful for us in order to prove the forgery, we can't arrive to a, to a conclusion of certainty. Everything depends on the particular uh, case. For example, in this case, we have a testament written in Greek. It is uh, an old person which suffers from uh, essential tremor. Uh, the tremor is a um, quite common uh, characteristic of um, the handwriting of elderly people. It depends on the clinical condition of them, but it could exist even in a quite healthy um, uh, old, ma old uh, individual. Uh, so in every case, we have to compare the particular uh, uh, suspected document with the characteristics deriving from the comparative material. In this case, the same characteristics of uh, um, a slightly more intense or less intense tremor, tremor were uh, existing even in the comparative material. So we were um, talking about uh, an authentic uh, testament. On the other hand, in this case, we have a different uh, situation. We see points where uh, the hand is completely in, um, um, incapable of uh, forming the letters. In the first row, for example, it's, uh, he's trying to write 5-3-2007, 5 March 2007. We can see that uh, he cannot really um, um, trace the curve uh, um, uh, traces, uh, the um, cases which are uh, more curved, and he's uh, unable to make this flexible movement in his palm in order to uh, create a um, more uh, circular form. On the other hand, on the same, uh, uh, and we have to say that in these cases, of course, because of the fact that the hand um, is, has lost his fluency in handwriting and the um, uh, level of the graphic uh, skill is deteriorated, uh, even uh, writing an extended text uh, because of the tiredness uh, means that after um, certain rows, we will find all these elements uh, more intense in a more intense uh, frequency. Though in this uh, case of testament, in the final part of this uh, uh, testament, we find um, suddenly points of great flexibility. Uh, you can see on the lower part on the left, uh, uh, the, the part of this letter, which is like a, a, a car with a great suspension, which is able to change direction without any problem. And it uh, produces curved lines. So uh, how could it, this be possible in the final part of a text, a quite extended text of 12 rows of an el old man who does not, who is not able even in the first row to uh, write uh, the numbers uh, 2007. And on the lower part of the right, you can see that in two different but uh, letters written one next to the other, the same form of uh, the circle on the first time, on the first atom is not uh, successive, on the second atom is very, the hand uh, is very flexible. So even this 
uh, difference between uh, um, um, an intense flexibility and complete lack of flexibility is uh, quite an indication of uh, forgery. Of course, if not present in the comparative material as in this case. So returning to the use of term about regarding the judicial graphology or document examination. Of course, there are different theoretical approaches. Uh, judicial graphology or forensic graphology, which is the most modern term, uses basically uh, the um, uses the graphological method, but in a different aspect uh, in regarding in relation to uh, analytical graphology. It uh, just uses from the theory of analytical graphology only the particular aspects that are needed in order to identify the forgery in the case of uh, an expertise. On the other hand, and there are even geographical uh, differentiations in the approach, in the mentality of approach of expertise. <clears throat> On the other hand, more, uh, more um, other countries that uh, have a higher uh, level, uh, cultural level and economical situation, which can use uh, much more the technological equipment, they have a more technical orientation uh, and approach in the analysis of the documents. Of course, another problem we face is the restriction of legislation regarding the protection of privacy because sometimes we face problems in uh, finding other comparative uh, material, but even this depends on the legislation of every country, which is even related to the cultural level of it. So document examination has a more technical approach and uh, um, it, which regards the analysis of the material aspect of the document the type of paper, the type of pen, of printer, etc. But it does not pay, pay uh, so much attention to the dynamical aspect. And it's, in this case, we have this problem that in case of morphological compatibility, because this is the main purpose of the uh, forger, uh, if we remain on the surface of the situation by anal analyzing only the morphological aspect, maybe we will uh, arrive, it's, it's uh, very dangerous, because we may arrive in a bad uh, conclusion, in a wrong conclusion, and in this case, of course, the forger has uh, has won, has um, managed to uh, arrive to the conclusion he wanted. So uh, the question that um, arises is uh, how could how could we demand from the sector of uh, graphology, which is a humanistic science, to adopt the unfamiliar requisites and rules? Uh, of uh, um, epistemological rules of the um, positive sciences, which are not compatible with his object, with each object of graphology. Isn't it restrictive as an ideological approach by those who demand uh, such requirements? I mean, uh, the ones that uh, consider only the mentality of positive scientists as a basis for the recognition of scientific nature of a particular uh, uh, field. Of course, that does not mean that uh, graphology should be considered a particular case in all the, the scientific uh, sector, but it means that uh, it um, that the enthusiasts of positive sciences, scientists should understand that we need a different uh, setup in uh, the humanistic sciences in general, and even in particular in the case of uh, forensic graphology. Uh, for example, I would like to say that uh, psychology, with this, which is a humanistic science, is recognized as a science. Although uh, there are only a, um, a small number of tests that can be repeated and give the same result. Because even the uh, reaction in a particular, in the same stimulus of the same uh, person, the same individual could be completely different in different uh, times because it depends even from other factors. We are not machines, as we said, we are human beings, so our reaction can be completely uh, stable. Um, if we apply in practice the mentalities of uh, document examination, of forensic graphology, or um, every other term that we could, uh, <coughs> sorry, that could we use, we have to say that in practice we find different cases with different 
uh, problematic points. So, in some cases, the mentality of technical of uh, document examination, the more that is the most uh, the most technical approach, could give us uh, the opportunity to solve a case without having the necessity of using the rules of graphology and vice versa. And sometimes we need the combination of both mentalities in, on, in order to arrive in a, a correct uh, conclusion. So we can't exclude nothing and we need to merge these mentalities in order to uh, have a more uh, useful tool in order to diagnose uh, the cases of uh, forgery. And here is the role of graphometry, which is uh, the um, uh, more theoretic term regarding the electronic signature. Graphometry practically uh, means that we are making measurements on several traits in order to identify um, the forger, but we get in every case in its modern form, we get more objective data. This was even the problem of the NAS report, NAS report in the United States of 2009 regarding the document examination, which considered, considered the experts' uh, conclusion report as more based on the subjective, subjective rather than objective elements. And this is the orientation in which we have to work in order to establish uh, the, the scientific basis of the of this uh, specific uh, field. Uh, in the past, graphometry was used uh, in 1894 in the famous uh, Dreyfus case. Uh, there was the application of the graphometric system of Bertillon, which was, which, uh, it was not complete. And uh, this was the reason for uh, arriving in that uh, failure. So in the modern era, of course, the technology has given us the opportunity to replace the classic paper the traditional uh, pen and paper uh, document on wet ink with a digital paper, that means writing on the surface of the tablets, with a specific use of uh, magnetic pen, which uh, substitutes, substitutes the uh, classical pen in order to sign documents. As a characteristics, as main characteristics of this um, uh, new biometrical signature, we have to say that it is a normal signature that is digitally produced. It's not a digital signature, it's not a digital uh, document. We have to make a, a, to uh, indicate the difference between a classic uh, document uh, and the digital document. The digital document, uh, it, it is a document that is completely produced digitally. That means that there is no trace of handwriting uh, in, in every form of it, digital or a classic one. We have the hybrid uh, kind of digital documents where we uh, sign on the surface of the tablet and this uh, signature is collocated in a particular point of the document of the digital document. And in this case, we have a mixed, let's say, hybrid uh, kind of document, which is uh, partially digitally, partially traditionally produced. And we have the classic um, signature on pen and paper. The difference between the classic signature on wet ink and the digitally produced is that we don't have, when we write uh, on a traditional paper, we leave the trace uh, on the surface of the paper, but we don't leave the surface on the surface of the digital, we don't leave any trace. This trace is mag mag magnetically reproduced and we can see it on the monitor of our computer. We can even print it, but it uh, does not leave any trace on the surface of the digital, of the digital paper of the tablet. Of course, the, of course, the legal entity depends on the law provision of every country. And uh, in the same time, this uh, electronic signature can be graphologically examined by the use of particular softwares. Of course, graphometry is not the, it's not the solution to the problem of uh, the recognition of the scientific nature, but it's more orientated on the uh, mentality of the positive uh, sciences and under particular uh, certain circumstances and uh, adjustments, it could give uh, the recognition to this uh, scientific center that is needed nowadays in order to uh, um, uh, recognize the scientific nature. Uh, in fact, if we put on the Google search uh, the word graphology, 
Uh, we can find uh, references which uh, um, equalize graphology to reading cards or uh, explaining the future, um, such as uh, reading the coffee, as we have in, in several traditional <clears throat> methods uh, used in uh, several countries. So we need to apply, uh, on, the, on, on the one hand, we need to adopt some of the uh, rules of the positive sciences, sciences in the case of uh, graphology. And on the other part, even uh, the enthusiasts of the positive scientists should understand that humanistic sciences demand and, uh, a, di a different uh, approach and a different mentality, of course. This is how an electronic signature is produced. Practically, we use the magnetic pen in order to write on the surface of the tablet. This is uh, an example from the um, a software for, uh, firma Zeta Forensic of uh, Namirial. On the upper uh, image on the right, we can see the graphic reproduction on our monitor of what we have written on the surface of the paper. And for example, in the lower image, we can see uh, the distribution of the graphic uh, pressure. Uh, the points in red are uh, the points of more intensity and more points in blue of less intensity. So we can see even the distribution and the variation of the graphic pressure. And this is an objective data that in the past, in the traditional examination of the paper, of the traditional paper, uh, this was something that was done um, in a subjective way by the expert without having the opportunity to demonstrate and to give evidence, uh, objective evidence about this uh, uh, observation of his own. We uh, made a reference to the NAS report and we returned to graphopathology because uh, it is um, really connected to the uh, graphological point of view uh, in uh, uh, approaching the analysis. Of course, we need to have a graphological approach in, in order to be able to understand how um, a particular disease which creates several distortions in the handwriting could affect the particular uh, suspected uh, document, taking into consideration all the information which uh, uh, refer to a particular uh, individual. We have to, be, to have a basic conception of medical and neurological issues, of course, if, if someone is a doctor and even graphologist is even better, but we don't need to uh, deepen into the uh, medical knowledge. We just need to understand in a simple way how the order uh, derives from the brain and it uh, gives uh, an activation to the neuromuscular system till the uh, graphic reproduction, the morphological production of the handwriting on the surface of the paper. Of course, we need to know the medical uh, condition of the suspected person in the particular, uh, in the same period. And uh, we have an experience, we should have, of course, an experience in translating and estimating uh, practically all the findings, the forensic uh, findings. Of course, experience is not something that we have, we, we could gain uh, uh, without uh, being in the, in the field uh, for several years, but, we can start our uh, uh, mentality using uh, the indications of our teachers, which uh, give usually an abstract orientation and an abstract indication of how we should explain several findings. So this is a very good uh, starting point uh, in order to explain uh, <clears throat> all the data. Of course, in most cases, the most important factor is to identify the qualitative background of uh, writing, having in mind that it is uh, the result of a certain mental source, of a certain ideological conception, very important even the case of disguising we referred to before, of a certain neuromuscular system, for example, uh, the neuromuscular system of a man 30 years old is quite different, is completely different uh, in relation to the one of a, a woman of 80 years old. So that means that uh, there are se several movements that uh, the old lady could not uh, do that the forger of 30 years old uh, should uh, might uh, recreate in uh, trying to imitate the, the original specimen and, of course, the writer's uh, clinical condition. 
The production of the handwriting is uh, the result of three uh, steps. First of all, the ideation, which is the ideological conception of the form of the letters of the signature. And that defines even the sequence of strokes for uh, the uh, practical production of the handwriting or signature. The execution, which refers to the graphic movement as a result of the system, neuromuscular system activity, and the handwriting, which is the morphological pro product on the surface of the <clears throat> paper. Uh, handwriting is an extremely complex human tasks, uh, task which is performed as a result of a complex cognitive process which is learned from childhood. It is the analysis and this analysis of the process shows that the handwriting consists of a sequence of coordinated movements of the muscles of the hand and the forearm, of course, but there is also contribution of the muscles of the arm and the shoulder region and practically in total, 43 muscles participate to a greater or lesser degree in the act of handwriting, as shown by electromyogram studies. This motor process of handwriting production uh, can be divided into a series of sub-processes which are thought to take place in separate, separate module, modules, including the modules in the central nervous system. Sorry, I need to drink <laughs> a little water. And of course, in adults which are trained in the handwriting since their childhood, we're talking about a sequence of muscle contractions which result in strokes and which last about one tenth of a second. So the forger, in order to imitate uh, successfully the authentic specimen, he has to follow the opposite order. That means he has to analyze the handwriting, trying to identify from the morphological aspect the elements he has to recreate. Then he has to execute this movement after having identified which is the sequence of strokes that are demanded in order to uh, reproduce the morphological uh, aspect of the genuine handwriting. And of course, he has to make particular graphical movements that might not be compatible with his own uh, neuromuscular system so these are points that create um, a more difficult, more, uh, that uh, make, make it more difficult for the forger to have a successful reproduction <clears throat> of the handwriting. And the last one is the uh, ideation, which is the, mo the most difficult part, because maybe he he's not able to realize the sequence of the genuine movement, and maybe or he might not be able to produce an effective imitation due to incompatibility of his own conception, inefficient analysis and understanding of the genuine fonts, and neuromuscular incapacity or incompatibility of graphical executions. If we, we could uh, draw a parallel between uh, the um, uh, direction that the water follows from the top of the mountain after melting being, uh, being uh, snow at the beginning in order to arrive in the sea. Uh, in every time, every year, it follows different uh, directions in order to arrive in the sea. So that's exactly what happens even in the order that derives from our brain in order to arrive to the final graphic product. So the original sequence of handwriting is that the brain gives the order and the fonts the neuromuscular system is activated and it arrives to the graphic product. In the case of forgery, we have the opposite direction. We have the opposite analysis of the formal aspect. We have an attempt to conceive the original brain order and fonts, and then the final attempt to recreate the original writing. So in the original writing, we have the mental software, which is the brain. We have the printer, if we make a paragon with the um, equipment, technological equipment we use are nowadays, computer, printer, etc. The printer is a neuromuscular system and the printed document is the original writing. Uh, while in the forged document, the printed document is the original writing, the attempt to conceive the original software is the attempt to uh, identify the elements we have to reproduce using the forged brain and in the final step, the attempt to succeed using a different printer, which is in this case, the forged hand. So in the free hand uh, simulation, we, I have established in a study I made and I published on January 2021, a, a model which is called uh, LADAP model. Uh, it, it was published uh, in this uh, link and it's free uh, for downloading. 
In the first stage, the elimination stage, we have to eliminate all our graphic uh, uh, characteristics. And this is uh, quite difficult because uh, it uh, contains even unconscious graphic movements. In the adoption stage, we have to adopt the uh, ideological uh, uh, forms of uh, the letters to imitate. And uh, we have to adopt even the uh, particular uh, movements of the hand regarding given the direction clockwise or anti-clockwise of particular strokes in order to imitate successfully. And of course, in order to arrive to this conclusion, we have to make a particular sequence of contracting muscles. And then in the application stage, we have to apply and control the um, two previous steps in order to arrive in this uh, um, successful uh, forgery. Uh, the lack of one of these elements could indicate, under thorough analysis, could indicate the uh, imitation. As a conclusion, uh, we said that uh, we have to stabilize a term, the, the most common term used uh, in the last uh, two, three years is in the European field is uh, forensic uh, document examination and or forensic graphology or criminalistic graphology in some uh, countries. Uh, of course, uh, worldwide forensic document examination is the most common term. Uh, we uh, refer to the necessity of recognizing uh, the scientific identity of graphology. We refer to the specific uh, sectors of the graphological uh, specialization. And as a uh, last point of reference, we have to say that it is very important to be able to identify all the range of graphic variation in order to uh, be able to identify uh, even the forgery or not in a particular case. But this, uh, unfortunately, depends on the quality and quantity of comparative, ma comparative material we have. Uh, dear Boris, this was the end of um, the presentation. If you, we can make a discussion. If you, if you have something to, to ask me, of, of course, I will be glad to, to answer. I will stop uh, sharing my screen. I imagine we don't need it anymore. Is it okay? Yep. Okay. So here we are again. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, how do you see the future of uh, graphology? I think that uh, uh, we start to, uh, um, we start understanding that we should not stop writing, practically. Uh, but you can the... say it a thousand times, but the truth of life is showing that we actually are stopping writing. This is true, but uh, I, I am um, observing, uh, I am a member of a scientific association of forensic examiners in the United States in the last almost two years, and uh, we're making seminars every month, and I observe that although the mentality is more uh, orientated to the technical approach of uh, documents, they start understanding that uh, we need a more graphological uh, concept, uh, approach because we have even the limits of uh, the diagnostic capability of every particular uh, equipment. Uh, so uh, because even of the NAS report, uh, the courts do not um, have the certainty in the conclusion uh, because of the fact that maybe uh, there might be a, a margin of error of 1% uh, in the estimation of the elements by the particular equipment. So we understand that we need a mixed uh, mentality. We have to merge these mentalities. So I'm quite opt optimistic about it. Maybe, um, of course, it, it can't happen in uh, every, in all over the world uh, in the same time because there are different evolutionary steps which depend even on the culture, the economic uh, situation in every state. But uh, to tell the truth, I'm quite optimistic. In the next future, in the next years, we will, we will start facing uh, cases of hybrid uh, expertise. Uh, let me explain the, the term hybrid in this uh, case. We will have to compare uh, electronic signatures with traditional signatures. One uh, solution that is uh, available, it is already available, is the fact that we have the opportunity to use the electronic signature and in the same time produce even traditionally the paper. That means that 
Uh, there are magnetic pens which have uh, the point of uh, classic bureau uh, and the um, function in the magnetic way. So we can put a piece of paper on the surface of the tablet. We start writing on wet ink and at the same time, magnetically, uh, what we write is transformed in the electronic signature. So, <coughs> so in this case, we will have the opportunity to compare the electronic signature with the hybrid signature with the traditional uh, signature of wedding. So uh, to tell the truth, I'm quite uh, optimistic, but uh, um, to tell the truth, it is not, we can't follow the same uh, evolution under this point of view all over the world, because there are particularities in every market that uh, will define what will uh, happen in the future. What was the most complicated case you were involved in? The most complicated cases um, uh, are those that are um, that demand the combination of historical facts with uh, graphic. I would not say in this case graphological graphic data. So you have to uh, try to understand which was the sequence of the historical facts because this gives you the um, appropriate orientation in the work hypothesis in order to stabilize, for example, uh, to arrive at the conclusion. For example, uh, there was a, a contract of 1940 which was uh, practically was an agreement in order to make a contract of uh, selling a property. Uh, because of the war, uh, because the, the, the agreement, the uh, initial agreement was of 1940, uh, they didn't have the opportunity to make the final contract. Apart from them, the seller with the buyer, uh, a woman with a man, uh, they, they, fall in they fell in love, they started living together in that particular property so they didn't have even uh, any reason for making this uh, for completing this um, um, selling of the, the property the problem was that uh, we couldn't find um, uh, the signature of uh, the notary in order to compare to different uh, documents which were supposed to be uh, produced in the same uh, notary office. Uh, the problem was that uh, in that cases, in that uh, um, era, there were no uh, technological equipment, so they didn't print or write in the typewriter the documents. Everything was written in the hand. It was handwritten. So uh, the secretary, always the secretaries were the ones who were uh, writing the copies who had to uh, deliver to the um, property register of the state. So we tried to find other um, uh, contracts by the registry, uh, which, was, uh, which were written by the same hand. So by the combination of different contracts that demanded uh, an investigation in the archives uh, of uh, several days, of, uh, as you can imagine, even because the archive of the notary was um, distracted in a fire during the war. So we didn't, we didn't have the opportunity to um, find elements from the archive of the notary. So this was a very complicated uh, situation in which, apart from the graphological aspect, the most problematic issue was uh, the investigation in order to find points of reference in order to orientate our investigation. Uh, in other cases, we have um, problematic, uh, we have issues regarding the information uh, which refers to the suspected uh, person or the presumed uh, testator, because uh, forgers usually try to hide elements, to hide information, so, so even though we might understand that there's something going uh, wrong, that there is a forgery, we don't have the means to demonstrate the forgery to give evidence to the to the court and uh, to tell the truth this is a situation in which i feel uh, really sad uh, because i um, i can i i have understood by instinct what is going on but i am unable to to demonstrate it and this is really uh, annoying for me uh, Sometimes we have uh, even forges, we have a great, great uh, um, 
variety of uh, fantasy. We're, we're talking about um, amazing scenarios uh, um, of reproducing the facts in order to present a forged document uh, as uh, and to uh, create the sensation that it is um, uh, authentic. Uh, so sometimes uh, we have really clever uh, forgers which create really clever scenarios. And even this is quite uh, amazing because several times we, we, we managed to find a small error which uh, becomes a starting point of revealing the, the forgery. So this, this part of uh, our profession is, uh, is quite exciting uh, in my uh, personal point of view and uh, gives me the, the energy I need to, to uh, face every, every new How case. How COVID, COVID uh, changed the approach to signatures? I believe that before COVID, many agencies required the originals. But because of the COVID, uh, they changed their policies allowing to submit the copies of the documents electronically. And for example, in this case, I'm forging my own signature because I have a scan of my signature and I just put it in PDF and I send it out. And it's indistinguishable from somebody else that would do the same thing. So uh, do you witness in Greece such change towards the electronic, uh, uh, it's not even electronic signature by definition. It's just uh, the way to comply with the requirement to have the form signed, which doesn't mean anything anymore because anybody can put your signature, your wife's signature. You can do it for yourself. Anybody else can do it for, for you. So how do you see this uh, change towards this uh, requirements? And that it seems they are not going back. So it, as it was accepted uh, in many agencies to, uh, to keep your copy on file, but you don't have to, to send it anywhere. So how do you see the dangers and the changes that we witness right now? It's true that uh, all this problem, all this it's issue- It's like forgery is... is not forgery anymore. It's very hard to, uh, to tell who actually put this signature on this form because it can be anybody. The letter of the, this issue of COVID has accelerated, has given a boost to the um, digital uh, procedure, this, um, uh, let's call it like this, in uh, exchanging uh, documents. So practically, yes, there are much more cases of um, forged documents where we can't identify who has uh, produced practically the forgery. Uh, the only uh, um, element we have in order to identify is the uh, in comparison with the specimen which uh, has been used as a source in order to imitate in the, in the case of copy paste uh, signatures. Uh, the problem is uh, quite, uh, it's true that in uh, respect to the past, uh, these uh, cases of forgery are more often nowadays. And I would say that it's, it's rather a, a question of um, identifying uh, hacking uh, than uh, identifying the, the forger who has tried to, to imitate another person. But uh, uh, what about the change in relationship, wife and, and the husband? The husband was doing all the job uh, for wife to do the paperwork and then they get divorced. He's still in position of her uh, the scan of her signature. It's true that there are many problems. Or the scan. partners for the business, for the yes. ease of the operations, we, we might have the signatures of our uh, partners. It's true. It's true that we have uh, several cases in the last two years of this uh, nature, and uh, we really- uh, They're indistinguishable <laughs> from the forms that actually have been signed uh, by consent. So We really find difficulties in these cases in order to uh, indicate what has really happened. Uh, in these uh, days, I'm examining a case where uh, someone has presented a document uh, theoretically uh, signed in uh, 1995, where he refers to the identity cards <laughs> of the two persons 
issued uh, one of them in 19, 1997 and the other one in 2003. So you can understand that sometimes even the forges make uh, uh, fatal errors, uh, which are quite obvious. But uh, it's true that there are cases where um, a well-designed, let's say, scenario, it's, uh, it's really uh, very difficult to uh, indicate, to demonstrate that... Uh, so it it been... doesn't that matter that uh, signatures altogether will be abandoned very soon? It will be substituted by passwords or, or biometry, like... Uh, uh, Eye tracking, uh, fingerprints, etc. Fingerprints. It's true, it's true. And this is a... Because um, such a opportunity for forgery we didn't have uh, for all those years. Uh, now uh, you can do this without even doing this. I think that the modern tendency in every uh, scientific field is the combination of the... Uh, of different... Uh, of the conclusions of different branches of uh, science, for example. Uh, when we analyze a testament, sometimes we try to identify even the DNA of the testator, apart from the graphological analysis. So the combination of the different uh, uh, kinds of expertise gives us a more uh, safe, a safer uh, result. But uh, even in eye tracking or fingerprints, they have uh, already uh, found methods in order to reproduce the iris of the eye or the, the fingerprint of our hand. Even, uh, for example, by taking a sample of a, a, a bottle of water that we have uh, touched in order to, to drink some water. So, there are, even in that sector, there are um, different ways of uh, creating fake um, evidence or creating um, different kinds of documents or different um, elements that could be, um, could not be uh, really identified with the traditional methods. I think of every expertise, I think that this is the modern tendency and the modern issue uh, generally in the in the field of science, in different fields of science. So uh, this is a challenge we have to face and we have to find new, new methods. And in order uh, to also more and more courts accepting emails as a proof and emails don't have any signatures. Uh, how often uh, uh, the authenticity of the signature is contested and how the courts view this, like administrative uh, uh, administrative uh, lawsuit and the person says I didn't sign it and uh, then it turns into the accusation that can end up with the criminal investigation, right? So how the judges uh, favorably looking at this excuse that I didn't sign or they just dismiss it uh, how how is the practice? It it depends on the case, on the historical facts of on the case. Uh, it's true that many times uh, the persons who have really signed the uh, particular document uh, tend to um, deny the originality of the, the signature. Uh, in other cases, there are really um, scenarios that. Uh, for example, in Greece, we know that uh, uh, the public services do not uh, follow so strictly the, the rules and the, the legislation. So there are several cases where there are forged documents created by third persons which uh, could uh, create problems. So uh, in every case, the, at least the Greek courts um, face every case uh, according to the historical facts that uh, they limit uh, the possibilities of uh, authenticity of uh, forgery or forgery. Of course, uh, every state, every country has its own legislation, its own, its own uh, tendency in that particular historical uh, moment. Uh, a different mentality even of uh, the judges in applying the law provision. So uh, we can't give a particular, a specific uh, answer in this, uh, in this question to tell the truth. Uh, even the um, uh, mentality and the behavior, let's say, of the Greek courts in the current historical moment in respect to the two, three years ago before the, the, COVID, of, uh, the COVID era, 
is quite different under this uh, point of view. So everything is changing. Everything is changing. Um, I think that we are in a, in a intermediate phase of uh, changes or in all uh, uh, the, the aspects of which uh, our social life. opportunities, but open other opportunities. Thank you very much, Professor. It was very enlightening and interesting uh, meeting. Thank you. I would like to thank you very much for the invitation again. Uh, I hope to meet you uh, personally in some uh, occasion. Thank you very much. Thank very you very much. Bye-bye. Have a nice day and a nice evening.